Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to today's Food Star webinar, Flavorings Focus on the Use of the Term Natural. This webinar is organized by the project Food Star, uh, European Food Studies and Training Alliance. My name is Christine Krabler. I may guide you through this afternoon. I am working at LVA since 1999 and I am a graduated food technologist. LVA is an institute for knowledge transfer and innovation management. We are occupied with research projects for product and process development in the Austrian food sector. I will guide you through this afternoon and I want to start with the agenda. I will make you acquainted with the icons of the control panel. I will give you a short introduction about the Foodster project. This will be followed by the presentation of our today's lecturer, who is Anna Oliveira. And you are invited to post questions. There will also be an evaluation by email, which will be sent to you after the event. So let's start with the control panel. This is the graphic you should be presented at the screen. Let's start with the field below. This is a text field where you can post your questions. I want to ask all attendees and recommend to all attendees to post your questions in this written form because they are much more easy to understand than the oral ones. You are welcome to post your questions during the lecture. I will then forward them to Mrs. Oliveira. You can minimize the panel to see the whole of the lecture with this error. This is the icon to uh, uh, change the size to full screen. By this icon, you can virtually raise your hand. I can see in the list of registrants if somebody has frozen his hand and your atten my attention is then drawn to you and I will address you in written form through the chat. So if you have any questions, especially concerning technical issues, raise your hand. I will then start a chat with you personally. The mic is uh, shown here. You can mute and unmute your micro. Also, I really recommend that you leave it muted because feedback sounds are really a problem during a lecture with this lot of attendees. For this reason, all micros are muted and the session will be recorded. So if you miss anything or encounter technical problems, you can come back to the recording of this lecture through the project website of Foodstar. This brings me to the project. EU Foodstar is the European Food Studies and Training Alliance. It's an Erasmus Plus, Plus Knowledge Alliance project and it started in January 2015. Gerhard Schleining is the coordinator of this project and this is why I'm talking to you from his channel. What is the vision of Foodstar? We see knowledge in universities and we see knowledge in food industry. In universities, the focus is on research, looking for fundamental mechanisms and on finding novelties for publication. In food industry, the focus is on the solution for practical problems. It's also about intellectual property rights and time constraints are really significant in food industry. So there's a gap in these two different approaches, which Foodstar, the consortium of Foodstar, wants to close. The idea is to establish long-term partnerships on European level between industry and academia and offer on a low threshold services for this interligation.
This map shows you the countries that are involved in the Foodstar Training Alliance. Seven universities and three food companies and 11 multipliers and training providers such as LVA are involved in the project. BOKU is the coordinating site. The university is located in Vienna and other universities from France, Portugal, Germany, the UK and Italy are also involved. The international basis is also given by the food companies. We are cooperating with FULACT. Our today's lecturer is from this company. Another cooperating company is GB Foods in Spain and Nestle from Switzerland is also associated to our consortium. The group of multipliers and training providers consists of 11 participants, 11 partners of the consortium. LVA is one of them and the others are distributed all over Europe as the map showed you before. We not only have a virtual network but also entertain physical hubs. We want to be a visual representation and thus support the cooperation of academia and industry. For this series of webinars we are open to suggestions so if you have topics in mind that you would wish to have a training about, refer to us via office at isaki-food.net. This brings us already to the introduction of today's lecturer. Mrs. Anna Oliveira is the coordinator of the regulatory and specifications team at Frulact Portugal. So today we have someone who has a very practical approach about legal topics. She's a graduated food engineer. She was at the University of Portugal and has been working in Frulact since 2004. First in R&D and for raw materials and now as a coordinator of the regulatory and specification teams. So we are looking today to forward to a lecture about a very practical approach. Also, the topic is rather theoretical, as is always the case for legal topics. I would now like to hand over the screen to Anna. I hope you're ready. Yes, thank you. I open your mic. Yes, please start. Okay. Good afternoon. Thank you for assisting to this webinar on European flavoring regulation. We will focus on natural today. So, flavoring regulation, uh, regulation 1334 from 2008, is part of the Food Improvement Agent Package. This package includes four regulations, one on flavorings, the other one on food additives, one for food enzymes, and another one for chemin approval procedure for food additives, food enzymes, and food flavorings. This package repealed and progressively replaced a number of directives and regulations. One of the advantages of this replacement is that regulations have immediate implementations as law in all member states and it avoids different national interpretations. So regarding the flavoring regulation, it laid down the rules on flavorings and food ingredients with flavoring properties for use in and on foods. It takes into account um, the consumer interest through appropriate labeling, the consumer health through risk assessment 
and other relevant factors as traditional, ethical or environmental factors. It gives us some tools like the Union List of Flavorings and Source Materials approved. It's uh, laid down in Annex 1 of this regulation. The conditions of use and rules of labeling. The scope of these regulations is flavorings which are used or intend to be used in or on foods, food ingredients with flavoring properties, food containing flavoring and or food ingredients with flavoring properties, and source materials for flavoring or food ingredients with flavoring properties. Out of the scope of this regulation are substances which have exclusively a sweet, sour or salty taste, raw foods and non-compound foods as herbs, for instance, as long as they have not been used as food ingredients. I will give you now some definitions, but after that I'll give you some examples so you could easily understand the definitions. So, what is a flavoring? Uh, flavoring are products not intended to be consumed as such, which are added to food in order to impart or modify other and or tastes. They consist of two parts. A flavoring part, it's compulsory, of course, and a non-flavoring part, which is optional. We will focus on the flavoring parts. And there are six flavoring part categories. Flavoring substances, and this category replaces three old ones, which were natural flavoring substances, natural identical and artificial flavoring substances. In fact, the difference between natural and identical and artificial disappears in this regulation. The flavoring substance can be either natural or synthetic. Another category is flavoring preparations. Thermal process flavorings, smoke flavorings, flavor precursors and other flavorings. In this webinar we will talk about the first two. Regarding flavoring substances, it's a defined chemical substance with flavoring properties. To be natural, this flavoring substance is obtained from material of vegetable, animal or microbiological origin by traditional food preparation processes. These processes are listed in Annex 2 of this regulation. Natural flavoring substances correspond to substances that are naturally present and have been identified in nature. Flavoring preparations are products other than flavoring substances. They are obtained from food or other material from vegetable, animal or microbiological origin by traditional food preparation processes. These are complex mixtures and they are always natural. So, when we talk about natural flavor, it is compulsory that the flavoring part contains only natural flavoring substances and or flavoring preparations. Regarding labeling, it is always possible to label a flavor as flavoring or with a more specific description of the flavoring, for instance, apple flavoring or banana flavoring. If we intend to use the term natural, then four possibilities to label natural flavorings exist. The first one, natural flavoring substances. The second one, natural X flavoring. Then natural X flavoring with other natural flavorings. And the last one, natural flavoring. We'll explore a little bit more these four. A natural flavoring substance, it's, it's when the flavoring component contains exclusively natural flavoring substances. So, to remind you, a flavoring is a flavoring part and a non-flavoring part. 
Here we are focused on the flavoring part. To be natural, all the flavoring part must be from natural flavoring substances or flavoring preparations. If you want to call, if you want to label uh, a flavor as natural flavoring substances, all the flavoring components is from natural flavoring substances. If we have a flavor that we want to label as natural X flavoring, and here the X is just to simplify a little bit, in the regulation the X stands for foods or food category or sources. But in this case, the flavoring component has been obtained exclusively or by at least 95% from the source material referred to. And the remaining 5% from other sources should only be used to adjust natural variations or to introduce special notes to the flavoring. For instance, if we have a natural strawberry flavoring, at least 95% of the source material is strawberry and the profile is strawberry. In this category, we can also have natural X and Y flavoring. In this case, the total source material from the named source is at least 95% of the flavoring component and the named sources needs to be easily recognized. I will give you some examples I have. Another possibility is natural X flavorings with other natural flavorings. In this case, the flavoring component is partially derived from the soil referred to flavored night. We say it's less white flavoring it's also possible natural flavors Anna? natural flavor in this we have case some in with the audio we have problems with the audio have you anything on the oh. internet open maybe you can shut you're not internet. listening to me we can't hear you at the moment, not very good. Maybe you can shut some of the internet tools that okay. are open, because the, the audio is bad. Is it better? Yes, really very much better. Please proceed, sorry yeah. to interrupt you. Do you want me to get back? It was just for half a minute, so, only half a minute back. Thank you very much. Sorry to interrupt okay. you. No problem at all. I'm sorry for this technical problem. I will just repeat this last slide. Um, so, another possibility, I already talked to you about natural flavoring substances and natural X flavoring. This slide is on natural X flavoring with other natural flavorings. It's when the flavoring component is less than 95% of the source material referred to. It can also be labeled as natural X and Y flavorings with other natural flavors when we have more than one named sources and they are both easily recognized. The last one, natural flavoring, it's when the flavoring component is derived from different source materials and where a reference to the source materials will not reflect their flavor or tastes. I can promise you that with the examples it will make it quite easier. So, a small summary, so to give a, a straight idea of the categories. Keep in mind that the flavoring part is 100% from natural sources. So, when we have more than 95% of the flavoring part derived from strawberry, for instance, we can label it as natural strawberry flavoring. If all the flavoring part is natural flavoring substances, 
label as natural flavoring substances is always possible. So, the other situation is when you have less than 95% of the flavoring part derived from strawberry, but the overall profile is still strawberry. In this case, we can use natural strawberry flavor with other natural flavorings. And the last one, in case we have 0% of the flavoring part from strawberry, but the overall profile is still strawberry, or if we have an amount of a flavoring part from strawberry, but the overall profile strawberry does not result from the strawberry itself, we will label it as natural flavoring. We cannot use the word strawberry because, in fact, the strawberry does not contribute to the overall profile. So, are you ready for a quick quiz? Let's see. We will start with mixtures of natural flavoring substances. So, in this example, all the flavoring components contains only natural flavoring substances. In this example, we have 95% of natural flavoring substances derived from mint and 5% substances derived from orange, for instance, to add a special note. How will we label this? Because the flavoring component is 100% natural flavoring substances, we can use natural flavoring, flavoring substances in the label or natural mint flavoring because more than 95% is derived from mint. Alternatively, we can always use flavoring or mint flavor. Another example, we have less than 95%. We have 94% of natural flavoring substances derived from mint and six derived from apple. So, in this particular case, we will label it as natural mint flavoring with other natural flavorings. As before, flavoring or mint flavoring is possible. And the last one, we have 100% of natural flavoring substances from apple or raspberry, but the apple and raspberry are not recognizable and the overall profile is banana, for instance. So, in this scenario, we will label it as natural flavoring. Of course, flavoring and banana flavoring are also possible as long as you don't use the word natural in this labeling. If you use the word natural, you must keep with the correct definition. Another one. And now we are in the natural X flavoring. In this scenario, um, the flavoring component contains natural flavoring substances and or flavoring preparations. If we have 95% of the flavoring component derived from mint and 5% from orange to a special note. If we use the word natural, we will label as natural mint flavor. Again, we have more than 95% of mint. Alternatively, as before, flavoring or mint flavoring without the word natural. Another example. 97% from raspberry and 3% from apple to adjust natural variations. Again, we have more than 95% from raspberry. The overall profile is raspberry. The label will be natural raspberry flavoring. And if we have 55% from orange, and 40 from tangerine. Both of these sources are recognizable and the sum is 95. 
the other 5% is from strawberry for a specific node. So if we are higher than 95, we can label as natural orange and tangerines flavoring or natural citrus flavoring. And again, we can use only flavoring or orange and tangerine flavoring. The third category, natural X flavoring with other natural flavorings. Once again, the flavoring component has both natural flavoring substances and flavoring preparations. So here we have less than 95% from mint and six from orange for a specific note. So the label will be, if you are under 95, natural mint flavoring with other natural flavorings. And again, mint flavoring or flavoring is possible without the natural word, remember. If we have 50% from orange and 40% from tangerine, with 10% from strawberry for a specific note, and the sum of 50 and 40 is 90, so less than 95, but still the overall profile is orange and tangerine, the label will be natural orange and tangerine flavorings with other natural flavorings, or natural citrus flavoring with other natural flavorings. Once again, citrus flavoring or flavoring is also possible. The last one, natural flavoring without naming the source. If we have 0% from cherry and 100% of uh, flavoring derived from other sources and cherry, but the overall profile is cherry, we will label it as natural flavoring. We cannot use the word cherry because it doesn't contribute to the overall profile. Alternatively, cherry flavoring or flavoring without the natural word. Another example, 10% derived from cherry and 90% from other sources than cherry. The overall profile is cherry, which came from the 90% source materials and not from the cherry itself. In this situation, we will have again natural flavoring or cherry flavoring or flavoring. The last example, 20% from hazelnut and 80% derived from other natural sources, strawberry, raspberry. The overall profile is hazelnut, which comes from the other 80% of the source materials. Once again, we cannot use the word hazelnut linked to natural, so we have to use natural flavoring or hazelnut flavoring or flavoring. Once again, the table just to remind to have general idea. So again, when you have more than 95% of the flavoring part from strawberry, natural strawberry flavoring, if it is less than 95%, but the overall profile is still strawberry, will get natural strawberry flavoring with other natural flavorings. And if we don't have in the flavoring part any natural substance from strawberry, or if the overall profile strawberry does not result from the strawberry itself, we have natural flavorings. Words do matter. And when we have a product, and we use natural flavoring and natural strawberry flavoring with other natural flavorings, for instance, WOMF is another way of saying it, with other natural flavorings. We can label in one of these two ways, flavoring, or if we want to use the term natural, 
we need to use the correct one. So we would say natural flavoring and natural strawberry flavoring with other natural flavorings. We cannot use only natural flavoring uh, to the both of uh, flavors. Some market examples of what we have been talking about. So, the strawberry chocolate, it wasn't on purpose. <laughs> I just like strawberry. Um, so here we have natural flavor, which means the source name does not reflect the profile of the flavor. And we also have natural vanilla flavor, which means the flavoring part has more than 95% from the source name vanilla. Another example, natural vanilla flavoring. In this case, the flavoring part is more than 95% from the source name vanilla. And natural brown sugar flavor with other natural flavorings, which means the flavoring part is less than 95% from the source name brown sugar. However, the profile is still brown sugar. This one states natural summer fruit, raspberry, strawberry, blackcurrant flavoring with other natural flavorings. Once again, the flavoring part is less than 95% from the source name, but the profile is still raspberry, strawberry, and blackcurrant. Some Belgian dark chocolate with natural vanilla flavor. The flavoring part, once again, higher than 95% from the source name vanilla. And we have also natural peppermint flavor with other natural flavorings, which meant that the flavoring part is less than 95% from the source name peppermint, but the profile is still peppermint. The last one, and my favorite, because we have three in one. In this case, the strawberry flavor yogurt uh, labels natural flavoring, which meant the source name does not reflect the profile. In the raspberry yogurt, they state natural raspberry flavor with other natural flavor. Anna, we can't, again, we can't hear you. The audio is off. Flavor. I'm sorry, we can't hear you, Anna. The audio is off. We can't hear you. We can't hear you. Anna, can you hear me? There's a problem with the audio. There's a problem with the audio. I'm sorry for this interruption. My apologies. There seems to be a problem with Anna's internet connection, which is rather likely the source of this disturbance. I'm very sorry for this technical problem. I hope we can solve it. Anna, I'm afraid we still can't hear you. 
and your mic is completely off now. My apologies to the attendants. I'm very sorry. But we encounter some technical problems we didn't have before. I'm very sorry. So I'm afraid I've completely lost audio connection to Mrs. Oliveira. In this case, I can only apologize and to all the attendees who have already posted questions, I can forward them to the speaker later on and post the Christine. Ah, here you are again. Oh, I'm happy. <laughs> oh, this, I'm so Anna, sorry. I can hear you now. Um, yeah, no problem. Okay. I don't know what it is. Uh, it's the first time we encounter such problems, but it's much I better asked, now. I have asked our technical team to come here just in case. I'm almost Great. finished. It will be okay. Do should I go a little bit back or? It was when you said that this uh, yogurt is your favorite example. Yes, so perfect. Perfect. I'm sorry well, for the interruptions, I'm, but I'm I think it's, it would be worth hearing you. <laughs> thank you, thank you, and I'm really <laughs> sorry. Okay, so. As I said, this is really my favorite one because we have three flavors in one package and each flavor is a good example of natural flavoring. The, the strawberry flavoring, strawberry yogurt, I'm sorry, uh, you can see in the label natural flavoring, which means the source name does not reflect the profile. In raspberry yogurt, we have natural raspberry flavor with other natural flavorings. In this case, the flavoring part is less than 95% from the source name raspberry, but the overall profile is still raspberry. And in the vanilla yogurt, we have a natural vanilla flavoring, which means the flavoring part is higher than 95% from the source name vanilla. This was the last example. Here I have two useful links, at least I think they are. The first one is Earlex. It's where we can find all the information about regulation, directives, consolidated legislation. It's the official site of Europe. The other one, it's the EFA, European Flavor Association. Here you have uh, different kinds of information. There are really good guidelines uh, we can use. And thank you so much for assisting to the webinar. And I'm really, really sorry for the technical problems. Good afternoon. Hi.
Thank you, Anna. I hope we could fix all our, the problems now and I'm quite sure it went well. Thank you for not, <laughs> for not losing your nerves. I will now proceed with forwarding the questions okay. that we have from our attendees. Just for a moment, there are still some arriving. So, here's the first one. You should now be able to read it, yes? So, the question is, how to detect the flavor of a compound? Is it allowed for a human sensory test? Well, uh, I must say I'm not a flavorist, so when you have expert panels and expert um, people, flavorists, they can detect or at least identify, identify the profile of some um, substances. They know that a particular substance will give a green, uh, it will impart a green uh, characteristic or a sweet characteristic. To know all the substances that are in a the flavor, there are analysis methods. I'm not quite familiar with them. I know they exist, of course. But yes, human people, human, yes, a human can identify we are talking about experts. We can uh, teach ourselves to recognize some flavors also. We will not be experts, but maybe we can taste a flavor or uh, a yogurt and say, hmm, this green note is from this substance. Okay. I'm not sure Next if I question. respond to you. Okay. So I have another question, again from Mr. or Mrs. Sorry, Zhang Yuetan. Is it allowed to use special enzymes or chemicals in flavoring processing? Are there regulations for enzymes or chemicals for food safety concerns? I'm not sure if, yeah. if it's your issue, your topic. I know you are a mm -hmm. specialist for legal regulations. But do you know something about enzymes and chemicals for flavoring processing? There is a list of approval substances and, and additives that can be have can be used when you when you are producing flavors. They are well defined in EU, EU regulation. So in the flavoring regulation, you have a positive um, list in Annex One of substances and flavor preparations you can use, but beside that you can use additives and they are uh, very well defined in, in EU regulations. Mm -hmm. so, so, next question. Yeah. Oh, sorry, you wanted to proceed? Uh, no, I was just saying that the, the additive regulation is 1333 from 2008. Mm -hmm the additive regulation. So, next question. Next question. When we said it's not recognizable for the apple flavoring in one of the examples, mm -hmm. what is our reference to make it not recognizable? Once again, um, it's the expert opinion. Uh, our um, flavor suppliers, when the they provide us the technical data sheet, they will mention there the correct label. Uh, so only an expert panel will decide based on specific tests and knowledge mm -hmm. if a certain um, flavor is recognizable or not. So mm -hmm. we must rely on our supplier's information, technical information. Technical information, specification of the supplier. Mm -hmm. 
Yes. So this is the last question. Is it a problem to show the fruits themselves as illustrations on the label if the flavoring doesn't mention the name of the fruit? Hmm. So if you don't write cherry... No, no that, that's, that's an interesting question because it's another regulation. In fact, it's the regulation to consumer inf uh, information. Mm. Uh, the base of consumer information is always do not mislead the consumer. So, if we have a representation of a fruit, for instance, we should have that fruit. For instance, I will get back to strawberry, I'm sorry, but if you have a strawberry in your label, a representation, or if you say it's a strawberry uh, yogurt, you must have strawberry inside as pieces or pulp or whatever. In some situations, um, it's not re exactly written in law, but I know there is guidelines from the professional associations. For instance, in water, or where you cannot exactly use pulps or purees or pieces inside, if we have a natural strawberry flavor, for instance, you may eventually put the, 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 the picture of the strawberry. But I would advise you to um, consultate a, a legal advisor or a professional association because it's a little bit a borderline. Okay? Yes, when we you say... Yeah. That's it. That's it, and you could come in conflict with the quantities you need to add. Yes, and it's, it's, it's always a little bit of a question. We, we, we must keep in mind that we, we, we cannot mislead the consumer. So if we say it has some ingredient, the ingredient must be there. In some... Uh, is defined, not for all countries, but we need to be a good judge of what we are labeling. We don't want to mislead people. Yes, that's an important thing. So, yes. it remains now to say thank you to you for your lecture and for the answers to the questions. I have al thank also you so from our attendees some messages where they thank you for your work and for the organizing of this webinar. So you are highly acknowledged by our attendees. Thank you, Anna. Thank you so much to, to you, Christine, and to everyone for attending. Yeah, thank you very much. And for those who want to get back to the recording, it will be made available on foodstar-star.eu. Food and in this event webinar section, the recordings of every webinar that has already been held is available. So you are invited to get back to our website for further information. Thank you to everybody who is thanking me now via our chat. This is very nice. Thank you. Highly appreciated. I wish you a very good afternoon. And Thank you. maybe we will meet again for the next Foodstar webinar. Thank you, Thank you. everybody very much. Bye, Anna. Bye-bye, thank you.